things. Uh, good, long-lasting bulls. This bull is weighing about 2,100 pounds. I'm going to go down one more notch. There's a couple of you that may want to cover your eyes. You didn't, you're not prepared to see a two-frame bull or two-and-a-half frames. But that's okay. We have some in every audience. Here's a two-and-a-half frame bull. Black Angus called Emancipate, two-and-a-half frame. Probably never weighed a ton, but he's weighing about 1850 when that picture was taken. If I could spin that bull around, I'd like to show you. He's a meat wagon. The other thing that people subconsciously think, you know, I think when I say two to four frame, they think, well, that's a miniature. I hope maybe you don't think that anymore. They also say, you know, I've got a pretty good idea what five frame is. Everybody talks about five frames right in the middle. So I'm going to think that a two and a half frame is half that size. Is that true? No. That's what they think. That's what they think. So here's the test. I told you to take notes, mental notes or otherwise, here's your test. What's the difference in inches between a five frame bull and this two and a half frame bull? Five inches. Some of you are paying attention. Very good. Five inches. Not that big a deal, is it? I mean, we thought there was going to be a foot of difference at least. Five inches of difference between a five frame and two and a half. Where's most of that five inches going to be found? Right down there? Between the ground and the belly. What's that way? Can you sell it? Ironically, I, I was given a talk similar to this in uh, South Carolina, and it was to a grass, it was to grass finished producers. I mean, these guys are producing grass finished beef is that type of audience, very similar to this probably. But there was a couple of university people there. There was a gal there from the university. And when I started talking about this, she said, well, there's less soup bone. <laughs> <laughs> less soup bone. Now, how, what am I going to do? I mean, that's kind of like, you're not going to convince me of anything today. <laughs> yes, you're right. Ironically, this two and a half frame bull weighing 1850 will weigh more than a lot of five and six frame bulls unless you feed the five and six frame bulls. These are bulls that run on grass year round just like our cows. There's not very many five and six frame bulls that will weigh that much without being fed. Okay, that's your frame score lesson. The type that looks works best for us is 1,000 to 1,200 pounds. And that kind of correlates to two to four frame. Our two frame cows will weigh 1,000 to 1,050. Three frame cows will weigh 11 to 1,150. Four frame, 12 to 1,250. Now I'm pretty sure that four frame is more efficient than five, three frame is more efficient than four, two frame is more efficient than three, and one frame is more efficient than two. So why do we stop at two? Hit the box. You know, the only reason I would stop here and I could, I could go on and say, you know, a, a U is more efficient than any cow. The smaller they are, the more efficient they are. However, most of our customers, most of the people, most of you are still trying to fit, fit the commodity industry. If we get any smaller than that, we're not going to fit the box. We may be at the low end of the box there, but it still fits, and we're making money doing it. I have had a few one and two frame cows. Two frame cows aren't hard to come by. One frame cows are hard to come by. I love them. Because you can breed them to a three or four frame bull and get just what you want. But those one frame cows that weigh about 950 pounds will always make me more money and last longer than anything else. Out of these three things here, this is probably the least important to worry about. Everybody I talk to, it seems like, has 1,100 pound cows. At least until they sell them. But there's a difference between a six frame cow that weighs 1,100 pounds and a three frame cow that weighs 1,100 pounds. One of them's thick and easy fleshing, and one of them's tall and hard keeping. And so it's a type here more than just the weight. Frame score, I was talking to a guy, uh, <coughs> 
guy right back here before or around lunchtime, and he said, what do I need to do to reduce the frame of my cows? I said, I use small frame bulls. You know, the right reason we got cows big is because we use big frame bulls. The only way to get it back the other way, go back the other way. And it's not that complicated. We want a cow with a lot of volume and capacity. She needs to be able to take our low quality forages and convert it into milk and meat. And if you live in a place like Missouri, it's more important, this is more important than it is for us in Colorado. Why is that? Your grass is stronger. Our grass is stronger. Yours has more water in it. So you've got to have more room to hold more grass that gets processed. Slab-sided cows, long pencil-gutted slab-sided cows will not work on our place without supplement. They just won't. Ultimately, what I want is a cow that can support the ranch instead of being supported by the ranch. Most ranchers in most states are working for their cows. And that's especially true if you're feeding hay. We want a cow that will work for us. And if they won't work for us, we replace them with one that will. So what's that look like? I'm going to show you some pictures of these are some, there's nothing special about these cows. They're cows scattered out different parts of the world in our program. The only thing special about these cows, they don't get pampered, they don't get fed, they're not being poured on or wormed or anything else. But you will see a, a kind of a type show up here. Uh, this, this would be in eastern, in northeast Kansas. This is eastern Colorado, for those of you that haven't been to our part of the world. That would be fall, dead brown grass. I can tell that's not eastern Colorado because there's trees back there. <laughs> look, look at the volume and the depth of heart growth on that cow. Look at the calf inside. Look at the calf inside. <clears throat> this is a three frame Hereford cow. They're hard to find. Somebody was asking me, where do we find good Herefords? There's not very many good Herefords anymore. Where are those at? This is on our ranch last March. Uh, Deanna does rotational grazing on our place. And I, I said, when you go out there to open the gate, move your cows, take a couple pictures. And what I, I mean, you can see there's a kind of a dry creek there. Uh, these are yucca plants. There's some snow on the ground, not completely covered, but basically our good grass is below that snow. But what I wanted to show here is we've got everything from 16-year-old cows to heifers that are getting ready to have their first calf to heifer calf, all in the same herd. They all have to do the same thing. Those, cat, those cows or heifers that come in with our second calves that, that don't breed back, they're calls. Is that right? Heifers that come with their sec that don't breed back with their second calf for calls. And that'll be our highest fallout area. They, they uh, if we keep them, you know, we, we may winter those, even though we know they're open, we may winter them and get them fat on grass the next summer. They're great eating. I mean, they're the right age, they're the right finish, everything's right. If you're an AI in those young cows, will you give them a chance to bull? If we're AI in, will I give them a chance with the bull? Yes. Do they show up over? Uh, we AI them and then we turn them out with a bull. So their next heat cycle, if we didn't get them stuck, the bull gets the chance. Did you say a minute ago you're breeding the calf at two years? We breed the calf at two years. Uh, you know, there may be some advantages to calving at three. I don't see very many. You know, there was an old study that started at Fort Robinson, Nebraska, when there was a research station there and finished at Clay Center, Nebraska. But they were testing, you know, calving at threes and calving at twos. And, and basically what their, their study came out with, if you don't, if you wait to calve as threes, you, you're building up the infertility that you don't need. If they can't breed as a yearling not doing anything, maybe you don't want them in the herd. It's that next year, and here, here's the... As commercial ranchers, I'm going to throw out an idea to you. I can't do it on my ranch, and you may not want to do it on yours. But economically, if they don't breed back with their second calf, their study suggests that you keep her. 
Make her breed as a yearling, but if she doesn't breed the next year, go ahead and keep her. She'll make you money. If you're going to give her a year off, give her the year off that she deserves, not the one she doesn't deserve. And I think that I haven't ever written about that, but I'd like to sometime because I, for a commercial rancher, I think it's a valid thought. But she's still valuable. Yeah. She's still valuable, but it depends on if you're in a herd building or herd, you know, what, what kind of program you're in. Now I'm going to look at any other thoughts about our cows that we just saw there. I hate to hurry things, but I don't want to hold you guys up that late either. Uh, I guess I'm in no hurry to leave when this thing's over. Yes, sir. We were talking about his cow herd. He sells his calves in January. Or were they full calves year round? Or he didn't just I, I'm going to assume that Greg calves pretty much in May and June and sells them in January. The steer calves in January. Heifer calves, he does not take off the cows. They just, they're always in the herd. Which is unique. I know a ranch in Wyoming doing the same thing. They leave all the calves on the cow, and in August they start pulling off the, the steer calves. Well, I got the idea from you. And that, you got the idea from me? Well, you you got to watch who you listen to. You know, there, there are some unique individuals, more than just one in this room, but Greg, Greg would be very unique. I mean, uh, you know, there are ways, if we start showing bulls without me wanting to, okay. there are ways to make money in this business. <coughs> Even though we, we can't see it. Okay, I'm going to start showing some bulls here. This is Deja Vu. He's a three and a half frame Red Angus bull. Mogwa, boy, that screen really makes his head look funny from this angle. <coughs> Looks like he has a Roman nose. Mog was kind of a unique individual. He was pictured here at two years of age. He's a three-frame bull, and when he was four years of age, he weighed over a ton. That's rare to have a three-frame bull weigh over a ton at that age. But he's just a massive meat wagon with a lot of fleshing ability. Another story I want to talk about Mogwa. Uh, some outfit had a, had a, they called it a grass genetics showcase in Kearney, Nebraska, two years in a row. And they called me up and said, can you bring a couple of bulls up? Well, showing bulls at a show is not my forte, but I sent Tyson and Gary Rhodes up with a couple of bulls, and I think they took Colorado Hobo, who was still alive at that time, and Mogwa, who was just two years of age coming out of the breeding pasture. And, I mean, basically, right before this picture was taken, they loaded, Tyson loaded Mogwa out in the pasture, hauled into Kearney, Nebraska. Uh, Dr. Alan Williams was there to demonstrate his ultrasound uh, on some cattle there, and he says, let's run that bull, let him see what he sh what, what's under his hide. That bull, coming out of the breeding pasture in September, had three-tenths of an inch of back fat and graded low choice. Yeah. Bulls don't do that. So there's some unique things about that bull. That said, that bull's probably too extreme to keep going that way. He's too much. Too much of anything is too much. I learned that the hard way, Greg. Is he still alive? No, he's not. We, he, he stifled himself and we had to put him down. Anyway, that's that's small one. Wabash is a, a, another about 3.2 frame bull. Pledge, born in Missouri, he's a three frame bull, deep body bull. Uh, my favorite, new favorite, Johnny B. Good. He's a three and a half frame bull. He's five years old. I don't know what that bull weighs, but he's a, he's massive. Pardon? Why is he your favorite? Uh, he, his mom is 15 years old. Uh, his, his sons and daughters are looking great. He's got a heck of a head, doesn't he? Pardon? He's got a heck of a hip, and that's not even showing the real hip foul in that world. I shared in an email, and some of you mentioned it today, the hip, you know, I shared a little different view of that hip. I mean, it, he's huge. Uh, Trailblazer, this is in a herd uh, in northeast Oklahoma on fescue. He's standing in fescue there. He's about a three-frame bull. Uh, this is a trash bred bull that uh, I own with Teddy Gentry. Uh, he was 10 or 11 years old at that time. He's a two-and-a-half-frame bull and a good one. His mother was still producing at 17. Idaho, again, is three-and-a-half-frame. Colorado Hobo is a four-and-a-half-frame. 
This bull we sold as a yearling. That's back when we were calving in April and still selling yearlings. 